Uh, my name is Bruce Payette. I work uh, for Microsoft and work on PowerShell for forever. Um, I am the emergency backup Mark Gray. He was originally supposed to be delivering the session, but unfortunately due to a tragic mountain biking accident, he now has only half of a knee left. <laughs> He's going to be recovering for a while. So uh, if I screw up, it's my fault, not his. Uh, there's lots of cool animations in this deck. They're his. I don't do animations. <laughs> so our agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about uh, and then look at the, the ghosts. With an, everybody recognizes that this is the Christmas Carol from Charles Dickens, right? Uh, to the tone of DSC. Okay, so the goal of this, this session um, is to take you through the past, the present, and the future, uh, illuminating uh, how DSC has changed, not just technically, but also from sort of a philosophical and, and uh, uh, thematic approach. Uh, we're going to look at some of the lessons that we've learned at various points uh, and talk about what it looks like now um, and what it could look, look like in the future. And I stitched in, Angel and I stitched in a slide like two seconds before I sat down. So this is a very raw deck. Uh, so first off, some of the industry drivers. These are the sort of core drivers of the industry uh, as we saw them when we started doing DSC. And the big one is, is this equation of scale times complexity uh, exceeds the skill, exceeds the ability of uh, traditional uh, operations teams to deal with what they have to deal with now. It was, compl it was hard configuring a single machine, um, making it hard to configure 100 machines or 1,000 machines or a million machines is just beyond the ability of, of anybody to deal with. Uh, so you have, to, you have to change the equation. You can't reduce the scale, so you have to reduce the complexity. And so cloud scale computing requires simplicity. So a, a critical driver is this drive towards simplicity. Um, at the same time that things are becoming more complex and higher scale, there's also this drive towards more rapid solution delivery. Uh, you, you can't wait six months to roll out a new version of, of your service. Uh, and this pace of change is, in, is increasing. Uh, and this is what's driven people towards DevOps. So velocity becomes the second core driving principle. And then finally, uh, heterogeneity becomes the norm. Uh, it's no longer a case that you have a pure window shop or a pure Unix shop. It's a mix of, of everything. It's a mix not, of, not only of operating systems, of hardware, of programming languages. So there's just this vast uh, sea of new tools that people are using. Uh, and so uh, ubiquity becomes a driver. Everything needs to work across. You need, to be able, you, need, you need to be able to work with arbitrary tools across arbitrary platforms. So let's take a look at the, the, the DSE in the past with our first release. So configuration as code was the obvious driver, right? Um, it's not a, a new thing. It's been around for quite some time, starting with CF Engine. Uh, we didn't have a solution at Microsoft. We didn't have a solution for desired state or, or for uh, PowerShell. Um, one of the things that we wanted to achieve with DSE was configuration as code, but make it part of PowerShell so that it was an incremental uh, thing, not, it was, it was an incremental uh, mind shift rather than a, a, a complete transitional mind shift. Um, our, our target audience was primarily uh, operations rather than DevOps, and we were looking mostly at on-prem enterprise scenarios. Um, our target platform was Windows, uh, either the latest release or down level. Um, in terms of configuration delivery, uh, we had both push and pull models. Uh, but configuration, you basically had to describe every node that you wanted. And so nodes were a little pet-like. We, we hadn't achieved the cattle state. Uh, everybody's familiar with the snowflake, pets, cattle. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty well understood now. And then the frequency of releases. So at that point, we were still tied to Windows. Uh, the first version of, of DSE was released in about a year from beginning to end, which was remarkably quick for a, power, for a Microsoft product. But it's still too slow for uh, cloud scale uh, computing. The other thing is it was all closed source, right? So we didn't have a choice at that point. So let's take a look at a checklist on where we are relative to various drivers. Oh, solutions. Our, our, we had a, the on-prem uh, pull server. Um, 
but you can't really describe that as a solution. It's, it was originally conceived of, in fact, as a demo, uh, and then got sort of productized. I'm, I'm going to say accidentally, but that's probably not quite true. <laughs> accidental product. So scar scorecard, yeah, we got configuration as code. I think we did a pretty good job with that. Um, the model is not as robust as some of the other tools, but the basics are there in in a, uh, a good way. Our target audience, we're not, I mean, we got Windows, we didn't get Linux. Um, we got the enterprise, but we didn't get the cloud. So our, our scorecard for the target audience is pretty meh. Uh, likewise with support, uh, what did we say for support? Yeah, so support was only Windows. Again, we missed Linux, we missed some of the other platforms. So our support is kind of mediocre. Configuration delivery, um, again, uh, we didn't have a solution, so it's pretty mediocre. Frequency, uh, frequency was just horrendous. We just, we are not coming anywhere near meeting the requirements of cloud scale computing uh, with the, the sort of Windows time, time frame that we had to deal with. And a solution, we just didn't have one, right? Like, there's just no way you can call the pull server a, a solution. And in terms of tracking industry changes, um, we're better than we were, but we're still not great. So let's take a look at the present. So big industry changes are, are the CI CD pipeline, right? Continuous integration, continuous deployment. Um, the, this deck actually links to a talk from Mark Green and or Mark, Mark Gray and Michael Green on how to do continuous integration using DSC. And so, you know, we're we're doing we're we're certainly involved in the CI/CD pipeline aspect of things. Our target audience has been broadened. We're we're targeting both ops and dev now, um, and uh, definitely starting to focus on the cloud. So we have both cloud and on-prem uh, support. Windows and Linux, so we, we uh, uh, had zero Linux support. We have some Linux support currently. Uh, configuration delivery, uh, we added ARM, the ARM extension, DSC extension, uh, which was a significant uh, addition to the uh, way, to the mechanisms for delivering configuration. Our frequency, one to six months, uh, uh, integration releases, um, and this is, it, there are different release rates for different aspects of the product. Uh, resources are releasing much more quickly, and resources are also being released in an open source fashion. So there's, um, I was looking at a number of around 700 resources available now. So a huge improvement over the, I think, 12 that we had in version one. And a lot of them are commu uh, community contributed. Um, we have a regular uh, community call on the DSE resource kit. Um, and so uh, that aspect of open source is definitely there for the resources, but not for the core. For a solution, we now have Azure uh, automation. Uh, and the other thing that we're doing is, is first party integration. So uh, with the first versions of DSC, we were looking outside Microsoft. Now we're also looking inside Microsoft. So we're uh, 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 being used internally by more first party, what we call first party integrations. Uh, change tracking is an example. Uh, it's a new feature that's in Azure Automation that uses a, a variation on DSE to do uh, configuration acquisition and, and change tracking uh, uh, of your machine's configuration. And we can also use DSE, the DSC resource extension in VM scale sets. So here's, here's our present scorecard. Industry changes, yeah, we're tracking against them okay. Uh, target audience, yeah, we have the right audience pretty much in focus now. Uh, now we have to look backwards, support. So we have some Linux support, but it's not first class, right? You can write uh, resources in Python on Linux. You can't write resources in PowerShell. We have open PowerShell yet, but Linux is still a second class citizen as far as DSC goes. Um, and that's something that we're working on. Uh, configuration delivery, yeah, we have uh, Azure Automation. So we're, we're tracking more to where we need to be uh, in terms of configuration delivery. Frequency is better, uh, especially on the open source stuff, but uh, it's not where it needs to be. Uh, Azure Automation as a solution, um, it's, I don't want to say bad things about it, but there, there's a huge backlog, right? There's a lot of stuff that we know that Azure Automation 
uh, needs to do to give you a really good quality solution, a complete solution. It's still very node-focused. Node uh, in terms of first-party integrations, uh, there we're doing a lot better. We went from zero to not zero. So let's try and look at some demos. The first demo is going to be uh, Azure Automation and uh, VM scale sets. So here's a demo script. Uh, I am already logged in. Let's create the resource group. We now have a resource group, and we'll do a deployment. Before we do the deployment, let's take a look at what we're actually deploying. Um, so what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to install uh, a web app uh, using DSC. Uh, so here's the basic configuration, installs the web server roles. Nothing particularly surprising here. And here's the configuration all zipped up so it can be put into Azure. Uh, and the real magic happens in the Azure JSON template. Uh, right. So here's the, the resource extension in the Azure template. Uh, is everybody familiar with ARM? If, if you're not familiar with ARM, take your hand up. A few people. So ARM is, is Azure's new, in quotes, way of configuring resources. ARM stands for Azure Resource Manager, and it's a new way of defining resources within, uh, within Azure. Um, it's, it uses a set of JSON templates. The JSON template contains a set of resource definitions that need, that are instantiated by the Azure Fabric Manager. Uh, it, it's kind of orthogonal to uh, uh, to DSE. You have your resources. Resources have properties and so forth. In this case, uh, an extension an extension in um, ARM is like a resource in PowerShell or in DSE. Uh, here we're going to use the DSE resource extension to download. Here's our configuration component. We're going to download this configuration. Uh, the script that it's going to get run out of that zip file is install.ps1, and then the function that it defines, the configuration function, install is install IIS. And then there's the very configuration arguments, the path of the web deploy package. If you we're looking at the, the .ps1 very quickly. You'll see that there's a web deploy package that gets, in, gets deployed. Uh, this, this parameterizes all of the DSE configuration. Um, you publish the configuration to Azure. Uh, you run the ARM template, and it builds you a VM, and then uh, runs the, the uh, DSE script inside that VM to configure the VM. And, and that's been around for a while. That's all very boring uh, because that just gives you one node. But because this is a scale set, uh, now you can you can have your configuration, and you can have your configuration scale to uh, a range of VMs. So here we have uh, profiles. The capacity we want a minimum of two instances up to a maximum of ten, and then we had a set of a set of rules for triggering when to create new instances. So the, the metric trigger that triggers on a, on a variety of characteristics. Uh, and then the scale action is to scale up. So any questions about the template? Yes? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there is, the, yeah, OK. I would, I would think so, uh, but I don't know for sure. Yeah. And then you get it. Right. Yes, VS, Visual Studio Code has extensions for almost everything. <coughs> I'll use 
use a clear text password because it's, a, because it's bad. And we've already created the resource group. And we fire this off and come back in about 40 minutes. Or not. Ah. Right. Yep. Yeah, I didn't clean up from a, from a previous test. So we'll pretend that this magically worked and this application was created and is all good because uh, Honestly, you won't see anything for a long time, so it's not very exciting. Yeah. Actually, it's still running. Yeah, so the instance I created previously is available now. So, magic. And the next demo, demo is using Azure Automation. The, the point of this demo is to show that we're not restricted to uh, Windows only, right? In this case, we're using Azure Automation and DSC to configure uh, MongoDB on a Linux node. So here's a little demo script. Here's the configuration that we're going to use. Um, I don't have the NX module, so I'm getting errors. But uh, the NX module is a set of uh, uh, using like Unix, Linux uh, resources. They're implemented in Python uh, and are run through OMI. But you can you can still you can compile the MOF on Windows, even though you can't run the resources on Windows. Uh, the the MOF schema is available and it still allows you to generate the output. So here we're going to build a Mongo, MongoDB instance. Uh, NX user creating a user, uh, setting up some files, cron tab, and then installing the, the various packages that are required. And starting the Mongo service, right? So Mongo, if you're not familiar with Mongo, Mongo is a NoSQL database that's very popular in open source. And that compiles into a MOF that looks like this. So it looks like a standard DSC MOF. Um, that's one of the nice things is that DSC provides you this, this decoupling between the source language, which produces this intermediate configuration representation, which can then be uh, applied by the back end. and then the ARM template for creating it. Let's see if this one fails too. I didn't, yeah. Thank you for that. There we go. And Mark even warned me about that. Okay. And we're off. And as you can see, it's very exciting. <laughs> Once again, uh, it's going to run for some considerable period of time uh, before it completes the deployment.
But going to the uh, Azure Automation uh, control panel in, in Azure, um, I showed you the DSC configuration. So that DSC configura configuration was compiled uh, and deployed to uh, Azure Automation. So you can see I have one DSC configuration. And because I've run it before, that DSC configuration will produce one, is, produces a node. If this one eventually completes, then we'll have a second node. Uh, that's basically all there is to it. But this shows that, that uh, you can configure the same, the same approach uh, that you use to configure Windows uh, can be configured, to, uh, can be used to configure Unix machines as well, um, even using just using PowerShell source code. Um, so technically you could, um, the Azure templates are owned by Azure and Jason, uh, people don't tend to respond favorably to the idea of using MOF. Um, it's a somewhat complex, uh, uh, representation. It has a bunch of nice characteristics, but Jason is a flavor of the month. Uh, next week it'll be YAML and then it'll be Toml and then it'll be something else, but well, you know, no, no, come on now, Rust is Tomal. It's, it's blah, 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 ML. So, so now let's look at the ghosts of what yet to come, right? So the big industry changes now are, are uh, immutable servers uh, and containers. Uh, serverless computing is really hot. Uh, and then microservice architectures. Uh, target audience is really shifting to be cloud first. Not cloud only, right? But look at, at the cloud is the future, so look at how, how your solution is going to work in the cloud uh, first. Um, better support for Linux, first class support for Linux. Uh, configuration, so one of the changes with, with um, containers is configuration during build, when you're building your container. So you configure the container at build time rather than uh, at deployment time. Frequency of innovation, less than a month. Um, with open source PowerShell, we deploy a new build every two weeks. Um, so uh, OMS and Azure Automation deploy even more quickly than that. So we want to get to this really rapid release scale where we can service customer needs quickly. Um, and then complete open source. Right, instead of the partial open source stuff that we have now, having the LCM be open source, having uh, um, all of the components become open source. Um, the solution, so Azure Automation as a solution, um, again, not to say anything bad about it, but it has, it has certain limitations in this model. And so we have this notion of, uh, of a configuration service, uh, which is a much higher layer, higher order model uh, I think Kenneth has a, se a, a session at 4 o'clock. Is Kenneth here? Yes. yes. You have a session at 4 o'clock? No. no? Right. Um, yeah, so there's going to be a configuration service in the future that is, is much, uh, a much higher level uh, type of service rather than specifically nodes. Uh, other changes like uh, LCM as a library so that it can be called from within individual applications. You see that some of that now in the configuration service that's in Azure Automation actually uses uh, a special flavor of DSC as a library to do uh, configuration discovery. So sort of the DSC plan for the future. This is the slide that got injected mere moments ago. Uh, I think Anhel will be talking to this again in his, his talk tomorrow. Um, so a bunch of fixes are coming in in uh, Redstone 3, uh, the next release, uh, the next as yet unnamed release of Windows and Server. Uh, so change reporting, monitor only mode, uh, certificate renewal, authenticated proxy support. Um, we're going to prioritize the hybrid cloud uh, and Azure scenarios first. Um, LCM redesign, uh, the, LCM, the LCM is implemented as a, a WMI provider. 
that means that we bring a lot of, of overhead uh, and constraints from the WMI subsystem. So we wanted to uh, redesign it. So for one thing, it would be a single code base between all of our platforms. Uh, make it lightweight uh, uh, for bootstrapping on on systems like Nano and an Azure Azure um, VM hosts. We want to remove some of the dependencies. Uh, actually, it's critical right now uh, with the resource extension. When you install, unless you're on a twenty uh, a server twenty sixteen, you have to install the WMF, which requires a reboot. Which means that it takes forever to install. It's, it's very, very slow, not because the DSC part is slow, but because installing the WMAP takes qu quite a long time. And so we need to get the DSC package separated from uh, WMAP. Uh, and then providing LCM as a library uh, as well as a service. So you can have side-by-side -side oper side -side operations. Uh, so you can have different groups uh, configuring different things. Um, the ability to do pull at the same time you're doing push. Uh, right now, DSC represents a single unified state of, of consistency. It may be the case that, that you want to have a resource that's pull only that might be inconsistent with the part that's maintaining your configuration, so you have to have those in separate LCMs. Uh, and then something that's really super important is the ability for the LCM to update itself. Uh, so these things are going to be rolled out gradually. Uh, targeting Azure first, and then uh, rolling out into into Windows and more broadly Windows, Linux, and so forth. So let's take a look at the the immutable infrastructure. Let's use DSC inside a container. Right, yeah, that, and so that essentially, what, what Kenneth is saying is essentially there's a, a shift uh, of focus uh, to broaden the platform rather than, uh, I suppose, broader rather than deeper for a short period of time as we shift our focus towards Azure and the cloud. Okay, so we're going to build a container. Take a look at the, here's our Docker file. It's going to build, build a server core container, um, the DSC pull. But yeah, so what we're, what we're setting up in this container, I should tell you that first, is we're going to set up a DSC pull server, right? So we have a script called DSC pull that contains a configuration for that uh, pull server. And a various uh, a set of run statements. Uh, that set up just different aspects. And then finally, we're going to run a configuration of putting into a location. And then this is sort of cheat at the, at the end to keep the Docker, from, to keep the container from exiting. Here's the configuration for setting up the, the poll server. Again, just a standard, this is the same one that you would use uh, to set up a poll server on a physical host. So, set up the container. Chug, 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 chug.
this obviously is running for a while. Once the thing is built, we'll be able to look at the image. So right now what we're doing is we're building the Docker image. Uh, we haven't actually started an active container yet. And this is, this is what I meant by uh, configuration at build time when you're building a container. It's running DSC to build that container. And you can see that there are no images currently. So while we're waiting for this thing to cook, does anybody have any questions? How many people are using containers on Windows? Nobody. How many people are using containers on Linux? Yeah, a lot more. How many people have tried DSC on Linux? Just out of curiosity. Ah, okay. And what's the experience being like? Yeah. <laughs> it's a serious question that I think I know the answer to. <laughs> well, we'll let that cook. So while it's cooking, we'll move on. We'll go to the summary, and maybe by the time I'm done the summary, it, it will have, have finished itself. Um, so again, we had our, our critical factors, simplicity, velocity, and ubiquity. Um, configuration is code. We've got solutions. We have a solution. We're working on additional solutions, uh, and we're tracking against industry changes. Um, we, need, we need to deliver PowerShell code more quickly. Uh, PowerShell code itself is being delivered more quickly. We need to deliver DSC more quickly. Uh, we've expanded the capabilities with configuration delivery. Um, and the, the nebulous and, and unspecified solution service or uh, configuration service will broaden that a great deal. And then we need to be open source on top of everything. Uh, that will give us the agility to match the, the industry's requirements for velocity. Uh, we need to extend the platform. Um, Cloud and on-premise, uh, multi-cloud, cross-platform Linux, Unix, Mac uh, will give us the ubiquity that we need. So, so, so you need to be open source. Are you going there? Or? We are going there. Um, that's one of, we had hoped to be there sooner. Um, that's one of the things that is being impacted a little bit by this platform shift that Kenneth talked about, or this, this focus shift on, on depth of platform. Uh, we, we've slowed down some of the open source work uh, in favor of getting this sort of deep integration with Azure and, and the broad platform. Um, to the best of my knowledge, everything will be open source. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, why don't you, yes.
right. Do we get a mic for this? Do we have a handheld mic for this guy? No, okay. So we have managed to delay long enough for my container creation to fail. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah.
<laughs> yeah, so that, that, that actually speaks to some of the, the idea of first-party integration, where eating our own dog food helps us uh, uh, focus on the right answer. Um, so just quickly to go through the rest of what, if, if my crea uh, container creation had succeeded, what I would have done, um, since it worked every other time, is I, you'd be able to dump Docker images, would be able to dump the, the image file, uh, Docker image. You can then do Docker run to start the, the service up. And that would show you, Docker PS would show you that it's running. Um, and then Docker exec, uh, you would exec into that running container and be able to run get website to view the, the, uh, uh, the container running. So with that, uh, I'm pretty much done. So. And now we can ask any more questions that we haven't already asked. <laughs> or we can go get a coffee. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, Mark Gray, who's the PM for DSC, is also the PM for, for uh, group policy. Uh, half of the DSC team is, it used to be the team for group policy. So there's, there's obviously uh, a lot of overlap in terms of knowledge. Uh, but they're sort of designed to be different things. Group policy is policy and preferences. So it's, it, it's a way of deploying information to, to applications on a machine but not so much about configuring the machine itself. I mean, they're, they're, they seem very similar, but there's a slightly different intent uh, around them. Like things like, I want this thing to be blue, or I want my login to be constrained between a particular time, isn't, isn't configuring the system so much as it is configuring uh, uh, policy on the machine. So um, uh, like yeah, um, there's, We've looked at taking GPOs, some of the GPOs, and being able to me mechanically turning them into DSC resources. But there are millions of those things, right? And I'm not sure that, that you want to deal with that many, many things in a MOF file. Um, so that's, that's an area that we, we think about on a regular basis. Um, and something may happen or it may not. More questions? Um you can configure it just to pull from the, the URL, which is what the I think the example 
was doing is that the, the scale set was just pulling from a URL. I don't know if I would want to pull directly from Git, but you could. Yeah, Michael Green. Uh, yeah. Michael Green just started up a, a, a project to try and do configuration sharing. Uh, it was posted on the PowerShell team blog uh, like last week, I think, and got tweeted a bunch. So yes, that's that's taking it to the next level. Uh, that uh, uh, resources configure uh, individual elements, but configurations address scenarios. Like do you, setting up WordPress, for example, um, uh, and being able to compose uh, higher layer fragments of configuration uh, is something that we want to work more on. Both. So Michael, Michael is just kicking off this effort, and so I don't know if, if it's. It's, it's nascent, and, and I don't know if we want to make any commitment on when we want to do that kind of thing. Uh, if we focus more on shift our focus from platform to solution, as we flesh out the scenarios of best practices in the world, almost certainly we will want all the configuration of the PowerShell suite and the resulting model to make sure that we have a clear traceability of what went Anything else? No? Okay, well, thank you very much. And, uh...